Welcome to this uh, PCR Talk About 2021 Symposium sponsored by Medtronic entitled Addressing the Challenges of Small Hourly Candles uh, Patients uh, with the Evolute Platform. So this is definitely a burning issue, a contemporary issue that we will try to understand a little bit more and provide you with some tips and tricks and guidance for your daily practice in order to improve uh, the outcomes of our patients. And uh, to uh, help me uh, guide you through this uh, very important topic, I have the great privilege to uh, co-host this session, this symposium with three friends of mine, uh, Kentaro Ayashida from uh, Japan. Hi, Kentaro. Yusuke Watanabe, uh, also from uh, Japan. And last but not least, uh, Myonki from uh, Hong from uh, uh, Korea. Uh, so maybe we could start uh, by stating what are going to be the learning objectives for uh, today's symposium. So all around small hourly cannabis uh, patient, what we'll uh, try to achieve today is uh, help you understand what is the prevalence of small hourly cannabis patients and the current challenges uh, in terms of treatment. The second objective will uh, be to uh, review the outcomes of the small uh, annually uh, patient population with particular focus uh, on women. And at last, to discuss the future uh, of clinical evidence looking at small aortic annually patients and treatment implications. Uh, so having uh, said that, maybe we can uh, start uh, the discussion because one of the objectives is to understand the prevalence of uh, small aortic annulus. And if we focus on the Asian population, this is a question for you, uh, Yusuke. Uh, what can you tell us about the prevalence of small RA cannulus uh, in the Asian population? Thank you, Didier. So, yeah, normally we have a, a patient, a tubby patient, is a smaller uh, body size of the patient, and 70% uh, uh, of the patient are uh, women. And also the annulus size is uh, uh, relatively small, uh, compared to the European and American people. So I think 60% uh, uh, or 70% of patients are uh, under 23 million valve uh, population, so smaller, smaller valve population. So this is a very uh, high uh, prevalence, 60 to 70% of your TAVI population. So it's quite uh, uh, important as compared to what we have in Western countries. And I... Um, I guess that this has inherent challenges, and uh, this is a question for you, Myonki. What are the, based on your experience, the challenges encountered when you have to treat small aortic annulus patients? The challenge for the treatment of the patient with a small the uh, annulus is that the uh, main objective is that the, we have to try to the more largest the uh, aortic valve area after the. the uh, uh, TAVI procedure, but the, the limitation is that the patient size and the aortic annulus size are smaller. So, therefore, we have to be uh, careful that the uh, well, first one is that the uh, uh, to uh, reduce the, the incidence of the, the more the uh, uh, PPM is so called uh, the process patient mismatch. Second one is that the originally. The uh, small annulus size, uh, there is uh, the more risk of the uh, coronary obstruction during the procedure. Is, uh, two point is uh, uh, more important. And uh, finally, the, uh, uh, based on uh, the, our experience in our institute, the uh, actual the instance of the, the small annulus is uh, the, about uh, around the 20 to the 25% uh, of the whole patient. And uh, mainly 90% of the patient is a female patient. That is uh, the main issue in the patient with a small annulus. So if we uh, summarize, uh, it's a very frequent issue, very high prevalence of small aortic annulus patient. And you nicely highlighted the challenges of treating these patients with TAVI, high uh, hemodynamics impairment, including uh, patient prosthesis mismatch, mismatch. We're going to see that afterwards. Coronary uh, occlusion. And I guess that sizing also has a... Uh, uh, some uh, specificities that we may go through uh, afterwards. Um, Kentaro, I guess it's time to uh, introduce our chat master. Okay, thank you very much, Didier. 
and uh, I'd like to introduce Dr. Hideyuki Kawashima from Tokyo University Hospital and uh, his interventional cardiologist. And uh, please don't hesitate to ask any question you want, uh, either in English or Japanese, and he will reply to you as soon as possible. So uh, please be very interactive. Thank you so much. Okay, so uh, we really understand that the small illness is quite a big issue for us all uh, in Asian cohort. And uh, we're going to have the uh, two presentations. After that, uh, we're going to have the discussion about the small illness, how to treat small illness. And I would like to introduce the, the first speaker, uh, Didier, Dr. Didier Cheche. And his topic is about review aortic valve replacement outcomes in patients with small aortic annulus. So, uh, Didier, please. Thank you very much, uh, Kentaro. So, what are the outcomes of aortic valve replacement in, in patients with small aortic annulus? Uh, so, here are my disclosure. Uh, so the, the first thing we uh, need to understand is to put everything into perspective because now we are more and more treating lower risk patients and uh, at least in Europe, there, there is that indication for low risk patients. So we need to, as a heart team, understand that, that there are different challenges and different expectations. And namely, if you watch the right part of the slide, we need to uh, ensure nice hemodynamics and avoid patient prosthesis mismatch, ensure that we are using devices that are durable uh, according to the life expectancy of the, pa of the patient, and that we maintain access to the coronary artery. And the main focus of the topic today is going to be about hemodynamics and how to prevent patient prosthesis mismatch. So uh, as uh, uh, Yusuke and Myungki said, a small aortic annulus is a very common finding. And uh, if we take the, uh, the surgical literature, the, the, the patients that are treated, and the surgical bioprosthesis label size below 21, you can see, you can understand that on the available randomized trial, uh, from the, the available randomized trial, 22 to 44% of the patients have a small aortic annulus below 430 uh, uh, millimeter square. Uh, so the prevalence is, uh, as we discussed before, uh, higher in uh, Southern Europe and Asia. And uh, when we treat these patients, uh, we do the valve valve procedures we have 70 to 80% of small inner diameter degenerative bioprosthesis, so a very frequent focus. And uh, uh, this, uh, the woman uh, seem to be the, the real target uh, for this uh, issue. And so uh, one thing that is really uh, available and coming from the literature is the fact that and when we are treating patients with a small annulus, we're going to get different hemodynamics as compared with patients with larger annulus. If we, we, we take 23 as the threshold, you can see when we compare uh, balloon expandable and uh, the self-expanding Evolute platform, in the small annulus, we have, we have higher gradients, lower with a self-expanding platform than the balloon expandable, but these gradients are higher than in larger anatomies. And this highlights uh, the challenges of this uh, of treating these patients with the uh, with TAVI. When the analysis is below 23 or 430 millimeters square, we need to understand how to prevent patient prosthesis mismatch and high residual mean gradient. And so, stating that with self expanding platforms, we're going to get better hemodynamics. We can go a little bit more into uh, uh, details uh, based on this TAVI small registry that compare various types of self-expanding platforms. And here, 90% of women, so this is a constant finding, but quite interesting, we can understand, we can see from this uh, nice work that the intra-annular self-expanding platforms uh, get provide higher gradients than the supra-annular platforms. So if we want to treat a patient at high risk of uh, residual gradient and patient prosthesis mismatch, a supra-annular self-expanding platform makes sense. And one of the value of using these uh, uh, self-expanding supranular platforms is that even if we are treating small uh, uh, annually, we have devices that can be utilized and achieve a large EOA. For example, with the Evolute platform, we can either utilize a 23 or 26 or even a 29, depending on the mean perimeter derived diameter of the annulus. It remains a small auric annulus patient, but we can sometimes uh, use a 29 platform with a large EOA. So this is really the value of this uh, type of uh, uh, architecture. 
when we uh, compare to the to the surgical valves, it's clear that if we take a patient with a, a small annulus, if we use a a TAVI uh, device, we're going to get larger e uh, EOS and lower gradients as compared to a uh, surgery. And this is something, this is an argument uh, that can be discussed during the heart team meetings when we are facing, for example, in a very, uh, uh, in a patient that is quite active, that deserves to have better hemodynamics, that can be something that can be, that could be uh, considered. It's quite uh, interesting if we uh, uh, compare what we have in TAVI devices and in, in surgery, we can see that in TAVI uh, uh, devices, wherever we use a very small device, a medium size or a large size, the uh, EOAs we're gonna get and the mean gradients are going to remain in the same range. While in the surgical valves, the smaller the valve is, the, grade, the higher the gradients is going to be. And this is definitely something that uh, is constant uh, through the literature. So uh, at last, we uh, we said uh, during the introduction that uh, severe patient prosthesis mismatch was one of the issue that we wanted to we want to avoid, and it makes sense because as you can see in that uh, in the core valve iris trial, patient at uh, with a final patient prosthesis mismatch, severe patient prosthesis mismatch, has a twofold higher mortality as compared to patients without severe patient prosthesis mismatch. So it makes sense. This is definitely an issue that we uh, should try. Uh, to avoid. We said that women represented 90% of the, uh, the target population, the small annually. And in that population, uh, from the WinTavi registry, the uh, severe patient prosthesis mismatch rate uh, 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 achieved a was 32.8%, so a very high uh, risk of severe patient prosthesis mismatch. And uh, the, when we take the uh, mean perimeter derived diameter of the, uh, the analyst, there wasn't a real difference between patients with a severe patient prosthesis mismatch and the one without a severe patient prosthesis mismatch. So the, uh, it's likely that the difference was made was based on the platform using a self-expanding supranular platform as compared to a balloon expandable ones. And this is uh, depicted here with a balloon expandable uh, platform and a, a small analyst, we have the two main determinants of uh, a final uh, residual gradient and a risk of severe patient prosthesis mismatch. So we understand what to do and which patients would benefit from a self expanding supra uh, platform. And if we compare with men, and this is going to be one of my final slides, women uh, have a higher risk of uh, severe patient prosthesis mismatch even in small annual uh, configuration as compared to men. And this is definitely the target. This should be the focus of our uh, uh, exploration and to make sure that we prevent this issue in uh, the women population. So to conclude, so very simply, small aortic annual is a very common finding, particularly in uh, Asia. A woman represent the vast majority of the, the patient who meet that type of anatomy. There is a very high risk of patient prosthesis mismatch when we have a small aortic analyst and in a woman. And there is definitely a positive impact of a self-expanding supranular platform like the Evolute on hemodynamics and preventing severe patient prosthesis mismatch. Thank you very much for your clear presentation, Didier. I really understand that what are the challenges of TAPI procedure for the patient with small annulus. And... Uh, Maybe we can discuss later. And and I also would like to introduce my friend, uh, Yusuke Watanabe uh, from Tech University. The topic of his presentation uh, will be um, <clears throat> a review tower in Japanese patients with a small aortic annulus. Update from the Ocean Tabu Registry. So thank you very much, Yusuke, for your presentation. Please start. Thank you, Kentaro, for introduction. So my uh, topic is uh, review tabi in Japanese patient with a small aortic annulus and uh, update from the ocean tabi registry. This is my CY. And uh, tabi has reached maturity. However, the efficacy and safety for small annulus was still concerned. And Asian patients, especially women with aortic stenosis, are small body sized and typically have a small annulus. So this is our uh, very old uh, 
article. So this is a comparison of the uh, Japan data. Uh, it's a, a data of prevailed Japan and the comparison with the French people. Uh, so as you can see, the body size area is smaller uh, in the Japanese uh, one. And uh, it was uh, 1.4. And uh, French people had a 1.7, so much smaller than uh, European people. And uh, annulus diameter by TEE is tw 20. And uh, uh, European was uh, 22. So annular size also smaller uh, in the Japanese cohort. And this is a CT analysis uh, of the uh, ocean tabby registry and uh, com comparison with also French people uh, of the CT scan. And this population, uh, we Japanese, uh, seventy-five percent of the patient were female, uh, and uh, French people were uh, forty-four percent. Okay. And uh, as you can see, the annular size, uh, average annular size, uh, was the in Japanese uh, three hundred seventy. Uh, it's a uh, annular area, and the European one is uh, one, four four hundred seventy-two. And also perimeter was 70 for Japanese and the European 80. So we have a much difference of the, in terms of annular size uh, in our uh, Japanese cohort. And this is a, a annular size uh, graph of the uh, mean annular size under 23 is much uh, high, high prevalence of, for our Japanese patient, and this maybe may uh, sixty percent or seventy percent is a uh, uh, size under twenty three. And as you can see, we have a, such a case. Sometimes we have encounter we encounter such a, a very small annulus case, annual case. So this patient is eighty three years old, female, and very small size body. And you can see annular size is 272. So very small annular size. So we have sometimes uh, such a patient. Uh, this slide already did uh, presented. So for, as you can see, so severe PPM rates will higher in the, especially in the surgical AVR group for small annular size. And also, uh, annular size uh, in patient with uh, annular size, smaller annular size. So PPM is uh, related to the uh, mortality, high mortality. And this slide also uh, presented by DDA, but we, we interview register also showed as a PPM rate is uh, higher among the uh, women and uh, also, using uh, self expanding valve is a low pre related to the lower uh, low incidence of the PPM. And also, this is a low risk uh, partner trial. So, PPM in women is uh, related to the worse outcome compared to the men. So, looking for these data, so in such a uh, Asian women, uh, we are treating a very small body size and small annulus. So that's related to the annulus rupture and coronary occlusion, vascular complications, and PPM is a very concern for our uh, treating uh, patient. Uh, this is already did uh, presented. So as uh, I, we want, I want to introduce our Japanese uh, registry data. So this is a Dr. Hase uh, from Keio University presented uh, the article. So this is a, a tabi uh, with Evolita R versus Sapien in Japanese patient with a small aortic annulus. Uh, data from the Ocean Tabi registry. So this uh, this study was performed uh, from uh, uh, October two, 2013 to the uh, 2017, 
from uh, Osan Tabi registries. So the cohort uh, with a uh, uh, 576 patient with uh, small aortic annulus. So it's defined by the mean diameter under 23 millimeter. Uh, who underwent transfemoral tabi with using Evolut R and Sapien. So we compared the data using uh, propensity matching and uh, also the, we made a cohort of this uh, selected patient with extreme small aortic annulus. Uh, mean diameter is under 21. So as you can see, it's an overall population cohort and the female patient is uh, almost 87%. And the valve size used was the uh, overall patient. Uh, Ebola to R was 26 millimeter valve was 73%. And the Sapien 3, for Sapien 3, 23 millimeter valve, 81%. And in the matched cohort, Ebola to R uh, 26 was 75 and the sapiens ray was 23 millimeter was 78%. So this, is, this slide shows uh, index EOA and mean PG. So as you can see, the small outer canvas under 23 millimeter matched cohort showed uh, lower, uh, mean, lower mean PG uh, in, uh, among Evolute R and uh, large uh, I index EOA was get, gained uh, in the evolutor compared to the Sapiens 3. And also uh, the extremely small aortic annulus cohort showed the same results and the favor of evolutor in terms of the uh, gradient and the EOA. So, and uh, the small aortic annulus under 20 centimeter match cohort as you can see, severe PPM rate was 0%. And also the extremely small aortic annulus cohort showed a severe PPM rate also 0%. And also moderate PPM rate is lower, than, lower among the Evolute R cohort compared to the Sapiens 3. So this, this is another uh, study from the Ocean Tabi Registry. So this is a, a impact of a, a small annulus on the PPM by Dr. Miyasaka uh, from Sendai Kosei Hospital. So as you can see, uh, body sized area uh, over 1.4 and annulus area under 385. So it means larger body and smaller uh, annulus, area, annulus area has a a uh, higher prevalence of a PPM. So we, we, should, we should care uh, uh, comparison of the annulus area and the body size area also to predict PPM. Okay, and this slide shows uh, Dr. Nara presented uh, recently so post dilatation is associated with lower incidence of PPM after implantation of Sapiens 3. So as you can see, to avoid PPM, so post dilatation will, uh, 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 will reduce uh, PG, mean PG uh, after implantation of the uh, initial valve. And uh, we can avoid PPM. Uh, uh, significantly after uh, post dilatation. And also, severe PPM is associated with early reflex thrombosis. Maybe this is an uh, important topic. So, Dr. Yanagisawa from uh, Keo University uh, did this uh, work. And severe PPM is related to the uh, early and, and early reflex thrombosis. So to avoid uh, different thrombosis, so PPM is, should be uh, avoid also. So this is my uh, final slide. So Asian female patient with a small annulus has a potential risk of PPM after TABI. 
Self expanding evolute tab has an advantage in terms of greater EOA and avoidance of PPM in patients with a small rally. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Yusuke, for your fantastic uh, presentation uh, based on the data from our Ocean Devil Registry as well as the existing data. So uh, let's move on to the discussion. And uh, I'd like to ask the uh, old uh, panelists that if the patient is 72 years old or relatively young and the female, and if she has the uh, aortic annulus area of 280 or something very small annulus, what is your strategy for this patient? Uh, do you start from surgical AVR or do you start from the TAVI procedure? And of course, the patient is very young. Maybe you need to think about the uh, second procedure for this patient. So uh, maybe, Yusuke, do you have any comment on that? Thank you, Kentaro. So this is a, a little bit difficult uh, quest question. So we must uh, think of the second valve uh, procedure in such a, a younger patient, but smaller annulus. So I will uh, recommend to such a woman, uh, if it's possible, uh, surgical AVR, but uh, small size, small, very small size annulus uh, will have a PPM rate is very higher among the surgical AVR patient. So such a patient uh, is uh, uh, very young and uh, activity is very high. So I recommend to, maybe I recommend to her to put a self-expanding valve first. And uh, if a second valve is needed, maybe 10 years uh, later, something, maybe we have a, a good device or a technique like Basilica, uh, and uh, we can choose a second tabby, maybe. I don't know, but I hope uh, such a strategy is uh, uh, very nice to her. Okay, thank you very much uh, for your clear uh, answer that you want to start from TAVI procedure with the safe expanded valve. Thank you. So, Dr. Miyagi Hong, uh, what is your opinion on this kind of patient? Uh, one of the, the uh, tragedy in the real practice uh, in patients who have uh, the surgical AVR, we frequently meet the, uh, this kind of the patient with uh, the uh, valve degeneration and uh, uh, when we evaluate that the patient status is that the, the patient underwent the, the surgical AVL, the valve size of only uh, 19. It's a real tragedy. So very small. And the surgeons uh, command that the, uh, uh, that is that the, based on that the patient is a small body size. So there is a no way uh, the, to uh, only the small size of it, but that the after that the uh, successful surgery, the patient is uh, the frequently the suffer from a, a symptom, and uh, maybe uh, several years later, and that the bell de degeneration is uh, the accelerate, and uh, she need uh, the another uh, repeat uh, redo or uh, such color uh, uh, AVR or the TAVI procedure. Therefore. In the young generation, uh, uh, young age of the patient, yeah, uh, I partly uh, agree with uh, the use case opinion is that the self-expanding uh, uh, valve is uh, one of the, the good option for the uh, patient. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Myung Ki Hong. That you also would like to start from the uh, TAPI procedure with the self-expanding device. And of course, we need to ask the uh, our surgeon to perform the high quality surgical procedure like root enlargement. And we can also ask them to use the expandable surgical valve because there are some expandable device for surgical uh, devices. And that could be also an option. So Didier, what is your current practice in France? So I have to say that I really enjoyed the discussion that uh, we have because this is daily, uh, definitely a daily focus. This is a small aortic cannula patient, most of the time women. And um, we uh, we need to understand that uh, very thorough uh, 
and uh, very um, uh, in detail how team discussion is necessary because we need to offer uh, up to date uh, either surgery or type of procedure to these patients. And uh, the surgery, as you said, I can tell you has to combine uh, apart from the aortic valve uh, replacement, potentially an aortic root uh, enlargement, just to make sure that the biggest uh, valve size can be utilized for a specific patient. If it is a, a TAVI uh, a procedure, we've understood from the presentations and the discussion that uh, potentially uh, inferior surface pain in supranular platform makes sense uh, because the final gradients, the final hemodynamics, and the risk of severe patient prosthesis mismatch is really going to be uh, low. So this is definitely something that we have to keep in mind. And uh, so this would be my choice depending on the overall risk profile of the patient, high-level uh, surgery, aortic root uh, enlargement, and AVR, or a self-expanding uh, able to uh, pro or pro plus uh, platform. But I would like to discuss with you uh, guys uh, the issue of uh, coronary, the risk of coronary obstruction. Uh, first, how do you assess uh, that in your daily practice? What do you uh, integrate in terms of uh, measurement? And uh, second, uh, do you adapt your technique uh, uh, of deployment just to minimize the risk of coronary obstruction? So maybe I'm young key starting uh, with you. Uh, how do you approach uh, uh, that at your institution? Okay. Okay, yeah. Uh, first of all, in patient with uh, the uh, small aortic aneurysm, yeah. anyhow, my personal bias is a uh, sub-expandable rather than a balloon expandable. Is uh, that there is a lot of the, the anatomical the region, but is a small aneurysm size is a uh, the base on a uh, from the the, uh, the small patient size. Is that the uh, use case presentation is uh, one of the good uh, example, uh, middle uh, uh, 80, and the height is uh, less than uh, 150 centi, and uh, the less than uh, 50, uh, and that patient usually chronic height less than 10, uh, 10, very low height, and that time if we try to the, the uh, balloon expectable belt, we always uh, the uh, the a uh, lot and. Uh, it uh, have a risk of uh, the coronary obstruction. So, and then what is the, the next step? The procedure itself is uh, the complicate. The uh, protection of the coronary and uh, some cases, uh, the chimney stenting or the, and then all procedure is more complicated, more complicated and more complicated. However, when we use uh, the sub-expandable belt, the procedure is, is uh, quite simple just deploy it. and uh, the most of the cases in our experience the coronary obstruction never occur the reason why the belt design of the, the uh, self expandable belt is uh, the uh, concave in the middle is that uh, it provides us uh, the more space in the sinus space is that uh, therefore risk for the coronary obstruction is uh, much much lower that is the, the one of the reasons I prefer the, the a sub expandable valve, particularly in the uh, patient with a small annulus. And the second one is that the, what is the, the such kind of patient? Is a whole female patient? Patient? No. We already think about the uh, body surface area. In the, the uh, Ocean Tabi study, the body surface area is 1.4. In our lab, is that the uh, uh, body surface area is 1.5, but the Western patient is a uh, body surface area 1.7. So when you look at the, the patient, small size, it, we have the, always a lot. Maybe this patient is a small and aortic annular size. Okay, so thank you very much. So it, uh, it means that you really take advantage of the uh, constrained uh, feature of the, uh, the EVOL platform. The, the, the location of the device that houses the leaflets is constrained, and this uh, prevents, in theory, the risk of coronary obstruction. So uh, that's uh, something that we uh, may uh, take as a, a take-home message for our daily practice. If the risk of coronary obstruction seems to be high, using the uh, configuration, the uh, architecture of the uh, Ebola platform uh, makes sense. But are, are there any um, refinements that you, uh, you use? Do you systematically uh, use... Uh, uh, commercial alignment, for example, in this patient, uh, Yusuke, is this something that you uh, do on a daily basis, or uh, don't you pay? Uh, uh, do you not pay attention to, uh, to that feature? Thank you, Didier. So 
I will do 100% uh, commission alignment uh, pr procedure because uh, uh, for such a small annual patient, because it's uh, also such a patient had a smaller bursa size, size, and the C junction size also small. So when we do uh, coronary uh, PCI uh, after after tabi, so maybe it's a risk of the uh, failure of the procedure. So so commission alignment procedure is very important for the treating such a patient. So we can say that uh, uh, self-expanding platform with the commercial alignment, the supranular design, should be could be one of the gold standards for smaller RT cannula uh, patients. Yes. Okay. Uh, so Kentaro, maybe uh, it's time to provide a kind of uh, summary in Japanese for our, our colleagues. Thank you very much, Didi, for your uh, discussion. So let me uh, talk in Japanese to summarize a little bit.で、今お話ししてたことはディスクスありまして、やはりあの、競争便に対してこのしっかり で、さらにこのコロナルクルージョンも非常にこの重要なトピックスであるということで、あの、防ぐことができるということで、あの、いろんなことを考えながらですね、このコロナウイルスを防いでいくということもこのスモールアナトミーの患者さんには重要なんじゃないかということを話をいたしました。Okay. So let's move on to the next uh, presentation. And I'd like to ask Didi to present a new trial starting for small annual patient smart trial. So Didi, please so thank you, Akintaro. So um, uh, indeed, there is a new uh, trial that has started for patients with small RD cannulas. It's the SMART trial, and it's really going to echo what has been uh, observed in the Ocean uh, Tidy Registry, but with randomized data. Because if we uh, speak about uh, with, uh, roughly the backgrounds, it's all that we have discussed, it, discussed uh, so far. First, uh, optimal hemodynamic performance is quite important for both clinical outcomes and long-term durability uh, uh, from a patient perspective and a device perspective. Uh, second, most of the studies uh, that have used ECHO as the gold standard have demonstrated a super hemodynamics for self-expanding uh, supranular devices as compared to balloon expandable platforms. We know that there are uh, adverse effects of high residual gradient, low EOAs, and severe patient prosthesis mismatch uh, that are quite frequent in the 20 to 30 percent of the patients with small RA cannulae. And we've said that 90 percent of these patients will be lady. And if we at last we move to uh, low risk patients, uh, the effect of adverse hemodynamics are probably uh, going to be more preeminent because these patients are active and younger. So uh, the SMART trial is uh, a kind of innovative because this is going to be the largest randomized trial in terms of uh, population size comparing two platforms. Uh, and it addresses the, uh, the, all the challenges of uh, severe uh, native aortic valve stenosis in patients with a small annulus with a, an area below 430 millimeters square as assessed by CT scan. The patient is going to, to be randomized one-to-one -one between the Evolute Pro Pro Plus platform and the Sapient 3, Sapient 3 Ultra. And it's going to be a kind of all-comer uh, study, assessment, clinical assessment, and eco-assessment at 30 days, at one year, and then on a yearly basis for five years. So we're going to get a lot of data coming from this uh, a randomized trial. So a uh, small annually randomized to Evolute or Sapient, smart trial, all-comer subjects with a significant RX stenosis, we have an anatomy, anatomy that is uh, uh, favorable for first ETAV procedure and second for either devices, the balloon expandable S3, S3 Ultra, or the Evolute, Evolute Pro Plus uh, platform. Uh, if we focus on the primary, the endpoints, there are two primary endpoints. The first one is a comp composite of mortality, disabling stroke, or heart failure rehospitalization at one year. And the second primary uh, endpoint is more 
hemodynamic focused, is bioprosthetic valve dysfunction assessed at 12 months, as uh, de uh, defined in uh, the uh, uh, this slide. So two very important endpoints, a clinical one and a hemodynamic one, and we're going to see if there is a difference between uh, both uh, platforms. So as I said, this is a all commerce study, including bicuspid aortic valves, only focusing on native anatomy, so we won't include patients with valid valve procedures. And once again, the anatomy has to be suitable for both devices. So there is going to there is a a, a, a screening committee assessing the suitability of the anatomy of the patient for both platforms and making sure that the, that the patients are equally selected for the S3 and the Evolut platform. So this is going to be a global uh, study. Uh, all around uh, uh, the US, Canada, and uh, Europe. The first patient has been enrolled in March uh, this year, and the enrollment is now going in a very uh, smooth uh, way. So I'm really looking forward to seeing the outcomes from the, uh, this uh, study, but we already had the insight from our Japanese colleague, colleague with the Ocean Tabby Registry, but and now we're going to get randomized data uh, to support all the hypotheses generated by uh, the Ocean Tabby Registry. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lydia, for your fantastic study plan. And uh, I have a question. Actually, you included the uh, leaf thrombosis and the structure valve deterioration in your study. So what is your anticipation of the outcome? Do you think the, uh, the PPM is associated with the uh, incidence of leaf thrombosis or structure valve deterioration? So this is a very uh, important uh, comment and issue that you raised, uh, Gantaro, and this has already uh, been uh, anticipated by uh, through the lecture by uh, Yusuke. And from the Ocean Tidy Registry, what we observed were signals towards a higher rate of leaflet thrombosis in patients with uh, severe patient prosthesis mismatch. So potentially, if we can avoid that with the supranular self-expanding platform, we're going to decrease the occurrence. We could decrease the occurrence of such events. Let's wait for the data of this uh, randomized trial uh, supported by Medtronic to see what exactly we observe in uh, in these patients. Okay, thank you. And we know that the severe prosthesis patient mismatch is associated with the uh, higher mortality. And what do you think of the moderate prosthesis patient mismatch? Do you care about this moderate PPM or uh, what is your thought? So it's really uh, controversial. So from the literature, it's uh, clear that severe patient prosthesis mismatch, both from a surgical standpoint and a, a transcaptor standpoint, has a negative impact on the survival. For moderate uh, patient prosthesis mismatch, it's uh, it's a little bit uh, uh, controversial. So we're going to see what we observe with a larger cohort and random randomization of the patients. Uh, but the clear focus should be uh, towards the avoidance of severe patient prosthesis mismatch unless we have a very big cohort of patients to really address these uh, um, rarer events, uh, we, we, don't, we won't have the answer. But this is very a very important point that you raised. We should avoid, I would say, patient prosthesis mismatch at all, any type at all, if we, if we could. Maybe your study will elucidate this question in the future. Thank you very much, Didier, for your fantastic lecture. Okay, so today uh, we had a really a nice discussion and first of all, and small annulus is quite a big issue for us Asian people because we have a lot of patients with small body size. And sometimes we have the risk of the severe process of patient mismatch as well as the uh, coronary occlusion in this specific small uh, anatomy. So we need to be careful. And in this setting, and the superannular device could also provide the uh, very nice and dynamic advantage. And uh, we can also think about the uh, this kind of the uh, type of device for younger patients to avoid severe process and patient mismatch. And of course, the surgical procedure could also be a very good option with root enlargement and uh, expandable device. So that's why so we need to uh, improve each other, the procedure to achieve the better outcome for the patient. And uh, <clears throat> so, and I also like to uh, summarize in Japanese. 
あの今日のですねこのセッションでは、この教書便利についてお話をしました。で、やはりですね今後、そのローリスクにこの適用がシフトしていく中で、この CBIPPM を防ぐということは非常に重要です。でもちろん、このエボリュートを使うことによって、かなり EOA が大きく取れると、で CBIPPM を防ぐことができますし、まあ、さらにまあ本当に若い方でローリスクの方に関しては、もちろん外科主義も。よろしいということで、このうまくですねこのコロナルオクルージョンであるとか、まあ、それが合併症を防ぎながら、この良い結果を患者さんにもたらしていくということが大変重要なんじゃないかということがよく分かりました。Okay, so thank you very much, Kentaro, Yusuke, and Yonki, for this fantastic discussion. And、uh, at last, thank,、uh, thank you, Medtronic, for supporting such a very educative and very important.、Uh, A symposium, and、uh, we all wish you a very nice、uh, PCR Tokyo Valve 2021. <music>